All right, so in this video, we're going to look at rationalizing the denominator. Now, in this video, all the denominators are going to be uh, numbers. There will not be any variables under the radicals. I'll have a separate video for that, and uh, we'll do square roots, cube roots, okay? It won't be just square roots. All right, so whenever we are simplifying radicals, you cannot have a variable, I'm, I'm sorry, you cannot have a radical in the denominator. And you can see here the square root of 5 is in the denominator. So we have to figure out a way to get rid of it. Well, to do that, we can multiply, if we multiply the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, that gives us the square root of 25, which equals 5. Okay, And so if I do that, that would get rid of the radical. Okay, But if you multiply the denominator by square root of 5, you have to also multiply the numerator by the square root of 5. Okay, And this is the same thing as multiplying by 1. So we can do that because remember, any time you multiply something by 1, you get the same thing back. So since I'm multiplying by 1, I'm not changing the problem up. Okay. So just remember, whatever you multiply to the denominator, you have to also multiply to the numerator. And so when I multiply, this gives me 3 square root of 5 over... And then we just did this here. The square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. And so there's our answer. All right. I've got five examples to work, so this is number 2. All right, so first let's do a little bit here. We might want to need to simplify this sum. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is split up the fraction and we're going to write it as the square root of 5 over the square root of 24. And so now what we want to do is we want to simplify this square root of 24 because 24 has a factor that's a perfect square which is 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 24 as the square root of 4 times 6. Okay, And then I've got square root of 5 over, now what's the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And then the square root of 6, well, it's not a perfect square. It doesn't have a factor that's a perfect square because the factors of 6 are what? 1, 2, 3, and 6. Okay, so the 6 has to stay under the square root. All right, so now let's get rid of the radical in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply to get rid of the square root of 6. I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 6 because that will give me the square root of 36. Okay, And the square root of 36 is 6. So since I multiplied the denominator by square root of 6, I have to also multiply the numerator by the square root of 6. And so this is going to give me square root of 5 times square root of 6 is square root of 30 over 2 times. Now remember, the square root of 6 times square root of 6, that's the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. So that's 2 times 6. Now we have square root of 30. And then I'm going to multiply 2 times 6, which is 12. Okay. And that would be my answer. Now, <clears throat> don't be tempted to cancel these. You see, you, we can see how 2 divides into 12 and 2 divides into 30. But you can't do that because one, one of the numbers is under a radical and the other one's not. See, the 30 is under the radical. The 12 is not, so those do not cancel. Okay, let's look at the next one. All right, so here we have 5 over the cube root of 2. <clears throat> Now, this is the most common mistake made when rationalizing the denominator and we have a cube root. What a lot of students do, and this, will, and this is incorrect, 
they'll multiply by the cube root of 2 over the cube root of 2. Well, let's think about this. If I multiply these two, what does that give me? That gives me the cube root of 4. Well, what's the cube root of 4? Well, it's not a perfect cube. So you can see that did us no good. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to multiply by the cube root of something over the cube root of something. So I need to figure out what can I multiply to 2 to get a perfect cube. Okay. Well, you should know your perfect cubes. Well, we know perfect cubes are what? 8 is a perfect cube. That's 2 cubed. 27 is 3 cubed. 64 is 4 cubed. 125 is 5 cubed, and so on. So looking at these perfect cubes, can I multiply something to 2 to get one of these? Yeah. I can multiply 2 times 4. See? 2 times 4 is going to give me this perfect cube. So I need to multiply numerator and denominator by the cube root of 4. And so this will give me 5 cube root of 4 over the cube root of 8. Okay. So now I have 5 over the cube root of 4, I'm, I'm sorry, 5 times the cube root of 4 over, and then the cube root of 8 is 2, and that got rid of the radical. So, like I said, a lot of students make the mistake of just, they would just multiply by the cube root of 2, okay, by whatever number's under here. That only works with square roots. It doesn't work with cube roots and fourth roots, okay. Let's look at another one. All right, so here we have the cube root of 24 over 5. All right, so first thing, let's split this up. So I've got cube root of 24 over the cube root of 5. Now, before I rationalize the, de before I rationalize the denominator, let's look and see if I can simplify the radicals any. Well, does 24, well, 24 is not a perfect cube, but does it have a factor that's a perfect cube? Yes. The 24, I can rewrite, well, 8 times 3. Okay, 8 is a perfect cube, and then that would be over the cube root of 5. So I look at this, and I say, okay, well, the cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 3 it's not a perfect cube. It doesn't have a factor that's a perfect cube. So it has to stay underneath the radical. And then that would be over the cube root of 5. Okay. So now we're ready to rationalize the denominator. So remember earlier we listed some perfect cubes. 8, 27, 64, 125. Okay. So, what can I multiply to the 5 to get, to get one of these? Well, let's see. 5 times 25 is 125. So, if I multiply the 5 by 25, that will give me this perfect cube of 125. So, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the cube root of 25. And so now I have 2 times the cube root, and then 3 times 25 is 75, over the cube root of 125. And so that's going to give me 2 cube root of 75 over, and then the cube root of 125 is 5. And another thing when you're doing all this, like I said, it's helpful to know your perfect cubes. Okay, you're just gonna have to you're gonna have to remember them. You know, maybe up to five or six six cubes. If your teacher lets you use a calculator, then you know they can be however big. So, all right. <clears throat> so let's look at this one. 
All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up. Now this is fourth root of 5 over the fourth root of 2. So I can't simplify the radicals, okay? Five's not a perfect fourth root, two's not a perfect fourth root, and they don't have factors that are perfect fourth roots. So I'm ready to rationalize the denominator. So I need to multiply the numerator and denominator by the fourth root of something. Well, what are some perfect fourth roots? Well, I know that two to the fourth is 16, three to the fourth is 81, okay, and then 4 raised to the 4th, 4 raised to the 4th is 256, okay, and then, you know, you can get some more, you know, if you're using a calculator, if not, you know, just memorize some of them. Well, if we're looking at these perfect 4th roots here, well, I can multiply something to 2 to get this perfect 4th root to get 16, 2 times 8. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by the fourth root of 8. And so this would give me the fourth root of 5 times 8. That's going to give me 40 over, and then that's going to be the fourth root of 16. And so now I get the fourth root of 40 over, and then the fourth root of 16 is 2. And so that would be my answer. All right, so I hope this video helped. Uh, check out my other videos. Uh, give me a like, subscribe, share the video. Thanks for watching.